قل يا أيها الناس إني رسول الله إليكم جميعا Say O oh humankind Indeed I am a messenger of Allah to all of you So the message of the Quran is a universal message It is a message whose theme is that Allah alone deserves to be worshipped that is the essence of the message and to preserve it till the end of this world so this human beings need to bring back into their life the laws of God to bring peace to the societies justice the brotherhood of humankind bring it back alive again So where is the miracle? Of course, this can be grasped by language experts. Just like one listening who has not had any kind of exposure to great poetry, listens to great poetry and they might think, oh, what's the big deal? However, there is a simple way by which we can appreciate that miracle. Though we may not be able to understand the miracle itself. We can appreciate it. How? Look at history. Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, spent 13 years in Mecca as a prophet, calling people to the worship of one God. They tried to dissuade him in a variety of different ways. Put pressure on his family. Offering him position. Offering him whichever women he wanted. Offering to gather the wealth of the nobles of Mecca. Make him the most wealthiest person in Mecca. And when they couldn't win him over by these attractive offers, then they turned to boycotting him trying to starve him. When that failed, they planned to kill him. And they sent youths from among them to kill him. And after they failed to catch him, in fact, he left before they were able to catch him. He went north to Medina. That didn't suffice. They sent armies after him. They fought him. Many of them died, lost their lives in the battle until eventually they were defeated all of that spanning maybe 20 years of struggle all of that could have been avoided by only producing one chapter like the smallest chapter in the quran consisting of three verses does that make sense that they would have turned away from that? They who love eloquence, literature, poetry, and prose, they love this. Would they have turned away from that and gone to offering him their wealth and their women, fighting, losing their lives, etc.? Does that make sense? No. If they could have produced that small chapter, be sure they would have. That was a challenge which needed to be met. Now, there's not every challenge that is made by people needs to be met. For example, in America, there was an individual by the name of Elijah Muhammad who made up his own religion, which he called the nation of Islam I call it the nation of Mislam in his teachings he taught that the dark-skinned peoples of the world were gods they were Allah's and the white-skinned people of the world were devils that was his teaching and he stood up in his temple his 
places of worship called temples. And he stood up in there and said, I dare any white man to come and prove that he is not a devil. And there's no known white man who came and went to his temple and tried to prove he wasn't a devil. So he said, see, then they must be devils. So obviously the challenge which he made was a challenge which didn't have to be met. Because people who were in power in the U.S. were white people. And he died. was not a threat to their power base. So they didn't need to make it. need to deal with it. Whereas in the case of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his call to Islam was a threat to the economic status of Mecca. It challenged their basic assumptions that there were many gods. And people came from all over Arabia to worship their many gods in Mecca, which brought economic solvency and power to the people who controlled Mecca, Quraysh tribe. So his call threatened their position. It was a danger to them. And that's why they wanted to crush it and to stop it at any cost. So they needed to meet that challenge. And they couldn't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left in the Quran scientific miracles for our times as further evidence of its divine origin. So we can find, and there are many books that have been written on this topic, but just as a couple of examples, we can find in the Quran Description of the development of the embryo in the womb of the woman. Description, a description which involves knowledge of the embryo at a stage when it was hard visible to the naked eye. An accurate description. So accurate that one of the leading embryologists in the world today, Dr. Keith Moore, who's from Canada, he, when presented with the verse of the Quran which described the development of the embryo, said, this could not have possibly come from Muhammad. And he's not a Muslim. He said it is not possible that Muhammad could have from himself Describe this because the microscope was not invented until how many hundreds of years after the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he couldn't possibly have done that from himself. When he was asked, "Then where could he possibly have gotten it from?" he said, "It must have been from God." Are you a Muslim? No. He said, I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Christian. But I admit that this must have come from God. So this is not something which the average layman makes up rumors and talks this talk. This is something which is recognized in the scientific world. Also, you can find in the chapter known as the chapter of iron, Hadid, 57th chapter, verse 25, where Allah describes the descent of iron to this world, sent down. Anzalna al Hadid. Fihi ba'tun shadid. Wa manafi'un lin nas. And I have sent down iron which contains in it great power and benefits to people. Modern science has concluded that iron was not 
produced in the earth. It was not one of the original components of the earth. Though it is now found throughout the earth, in the core of the earth, etc. The origin of iron, as they say, came from an extraterrestrial source. Meteorites of iron came into the earth's crust, slammed into it in different parts all over the earth, and iron became a part of the earth. Why? Because the heat necessary to create the iron atom was not produced by the sun. The earth having been an extension from the sun, according to modern theory, the heat produced by our sun was not sufficient to produce iron on the earth. And that's why there was none, and its source is extraterrestrial. And we can see that reference there in the Quran. So Allah left those signs, and there are many others, in fields of meteorology, in fields of botany, in the various fields of science. Signs have been left there for people to reflect on. Where did this book come from? And they were important to our times. Earlier times, these verses were read, and people understood them in a general sense. They couldn't really get to what was being addressed there because it wasn't for their time. So, the Quran itself states in the seventh chapter, verse 158, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Say, O humankind, indeed, I am a messenger of Allah to all of you. To all of you. So the message of the Quran is a universal message. One sent to humankind throughout time. It is a message whose theme is that the law alone deserves to be worshipped. That human beings should submit to divine law in their personal lives and in their relationships among themselves and with the rest of creation. That a law alone deserves to be worshipped. That is the essence of the message. It was the essence of the message of all of the prophets. But that message became distorted in time and people strayed away from it added gods, added intermediaries between themselves and God. So the final message came to revive that message and to preserve it till the end of this world. And also that message contained a command to humankind to submit to the laws of God in their lives. Because the laws of God are the only absolute laws, absolutely true. True because they address the essence of humankind. So they don't need to be changed every few years, every decade, every century, we have to upgrade them. No. Human laws made by human beings have to be upgraded in that way. But the laws from the creator of human beings take into account the very nature of human beings and address them in such a way that the laws will stand for all time. So this human beings need to bring back into their lives the laws of God. 
to bring peace to their societies, justice, to bring in their societies brotherhood, the brotherhood of humankind, bring it back alive again. And the book, the Quran, informed us that the previous books had been changed. As in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 15, where Allah says, Ya Ahl Al-Kitab, Qad ja'akum rasooluna yubayyinu lakum kathiram mimma kuntum tukhfuna min al-kitab. O people of the books, Christians and Jews, people of revealed books, a messenger, our messenger has come to you to clarify to you much of what you have hidden in your books. These books have been distorted and changed. Teachings changed. So, it is in the Quran that the essence of the messages of all of the prophets have been preserved. Preserved until the end of this world. A universal message which addresses the needs of all of humankind. However, in spite of the universality of this message and that the book has been called the most read book in the world. It is the one book which is read more than any other book in the world. In spite of that, we find the Prophet lamenting in the Quran. Allah preserves his lament in Surah Al Furqan, the 25th chapter, verse 30, in which he said, Waqala Rasulu, Ya Rabbi. And the messenger said, O oh my Lord, indeed my people have taken this Quran and cast it aside. They have abandoned this Quran. And that is the state we are in today. Muslims, while reading the Quran regularly in Ramadan and other times in their lives, in their prayers, they're reciting verses from the Quran daily around the world, 24 hours a day, every minute of every day, somewhere in the world, the Quran is being recited and read. In spite of that, the Prophet lamented that the time would come when Muslims who are supposed to believe in this book would abandon it. We are living those times. Muslims today are only reading it ritualistically in the month of Ramadan. Many leave the Quran 11 months and in the ninth month of the lunar year they take the Quran from the top of the shelf because they keep it on the top shelf though it's not been prescribed keep it on the top shelf you'll not find any statement of the Prophet ﷺ where he said keep your Quran on the top shelf he never said this but this has become our tradition external traditions are about this book where we put it on the top shelf we wrap it in leather and special cases we keep it there 11 months a lot of dust collects on it so we take it down we blow off the dust then we open it up and we read it during that month then we close it back and we put it back up on the shelf for another 11 months that is abandonment of the Quran it has become a ritual and instead of reading the Quran and reflecting on its meanings and trying to benefit from it, people read it just for the sake of reading it. A ritual. A popular ritual. 
Children are taught to read it. And a little ceremony is done when they have completed reading the text from cover to cover. It's called Khatmul Quran. A little celebration is made, little party is made for the person, and the parents feel, I've done my duty. I've passed on Islam to my children with the Khatmul Quran. A great failure because the duty has not been done. Islam has not been passed on. Only a ritual, a custom. Furthermore, we find people not using it to judge in their affairs. Though the Quran clearly states in its text, وَإِن تَنَازَعَتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِهِ if you argue, come into conflict about anything, then take it back to Allah, that is the Quran, and his messenger, the messenger of Allah, that is the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad So, we don't use it to judge in our affairs. So what do we use? Custom and emotions. So we find Muslims doing all kinds of things for which they are now accused. Whether it's honor killings, we have Muslims known for it. They're not the only ones. There are others who do it too. But somehow Muslims tend to be on center stage when it comes to honor killings. In order to preserve the honor of the family, if a daughter, usually it's daughters, does something which is shameful to the family, then they will kill her. Her father, her brother, her uncle will conspire, catch her and kill her. There are cases that just recently happened in the UK. Front page news. Muslims, the honor killers. And so on and so forth. A variety of other activities unsavory activities which Muslims are involved in. By burns. We have it here in India. It's common amongst the Hindus, but Muslims also participate. Why? A Muslim man marries a Muslim woman and he demands from her family a huge dowry. That's what Hindus do. Are Muslims allowed to do that? Is that what it says in the Quran? No. The Quran says for the men to give the dowry to the women. So they don't judge by the rulings of the Quran.